everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Kat, now Kat Scully, um, and I have just got back from getting married in Santorini. I've just returned back to Australia, which is where I live, and I really wanted to take the time to debrief with you guys, talk you through how we planned destination wedding all the way from Australia what went right, what didn't go right, the process that we went through, all of that, and just have a big juicy catch up. Hopefully I can cover everything in this video. If you still have any questions, then pop them down in the comments below. And if we don't manage to cover it all in this video, then I'm more than happy to do a Q&A afterwards and answer any of your questions um, and touch on anything that I haven't had time to in this video. So let's dive right in because I think we have a lot to cover. <laughs> So a bit of backstory, if you don't know me and Jake, if you've not been here before. So as I mentioned, my name's Kat, Jake is my husband. We are an English couple, we've been together for 12 years now and we moved to Australia a couple of years ago. We were engaged for coming up to two years, um, just less than, and yeah, decided to get married in Santorini on the 6th of August, 2023, which feels like an absolute dream to say that I cannot believe that this is my life. So we decided on Santorini kind of on a whim. So being from England but living in Australia, most of our family and friends are still in England. So we knew that we would have to travel back to Europe anyway for the wedding. Trying to get everyone out to Australia wasn't going to be feasible due to time, money, all of that logistical stuff. So we knew that we would have to travel back anyway and the idea of an English wedding just really wasn't resonating with us. I think because we have so much sun here in Australia, we just didn't want to risk having, even if we had a summer wedding in England, you're risking it being rainy, cloudy, all of that. It was really important for us to have that extended time with all of the family so that we could spend proper quality time together. We know all too well from weddings when people come just for the weekend or you only see them on the wedding day. So this was going to be the first time for us seeing family and friends in about a year and we didn't want there to be all of this pressure on one day to have a full, you know, once in a year catch up to just be on this one day. So for us to have everyone in one place for an extended amount of time was so special to us and we are so glad that we managed to pull it off. So once we knew that it was going to be somewhere destination, we were kind of picking names out of a hat basically. We really loved the idea of like an Amalfi Coast wedding. The kind of priorities were so Europe, somewhere that everyone could kind of go and have a holiday so that people weren't just traveling for the wedding and there being nothing else around for them to see. We wanted everyone to have a really good week and just enjoyable for them as well. I knew that I wanted it to be somewhere warm and sunny. I had a criteria which wasn't essential but was a nice to have was um, by water so we loved the idea of like Lake Como or Amalfi Coast um, so by the sea but we looked into it and it was just crazy crazy expensive completely beyond our budget and then as I was researching it and there wasn't that much information online about planning an Ital Italian wedding. As I was researching it on YouTube actually, I came across this amazing Santorini bride who had done a few videos breaking down the process. She did kind of tours of venues. She was absolutely amazing. I will link her down below. Her name is Victoria Divine. And that kind of sparked something and I was like, oh, Santorini. I grew up going to Greek islands pretty much every year on a summer holiday. I mean, obviously, I don't need to tell you, Santorini is beautiful. It absolutely exceeded our expectations. We'd never been before. We've been to Mykonos and that was the favorite place I'd ever been to. So yeah, once we decided on Santorini, that was it basically. And then I came across a Facebook page, which is Santorini Brides. Um, again, I'll put that group down in the description box below because they were phenomenal as a resource to get supplier recommendations, planner recommendations, ask questions, get recommendations for just general restaurants, hotels, stuff like that on the island, which really took a lot of the stress out of trying to find out absolutely everything. So once we decided on Santorini, we then just started the kind of looking at how we we're actually going to do it. So 
We decided to get a planner. We decided quite early on that trying to plan an overseas wedding where we don't know the language and we don't know all of the suppliers was just going to be hectic <laughs> and really, really hard. Um, and from what we were seeing on the Santorini Brides Facebook group, unless you're going for a budget wedding or a elopement or that sort of thing, a planner was pretty much essential and definitely a on the day coordinator was absolutely i don't know how if anyone does a wedding without an on the day coordinator i have absolutely no idea how and i don't envy them i was so so grateful for behind on the day because it really did mean that we could just sit back relax like the whole way through wedding planning people kept being like oh you're not really stressed like how how on earth do you plan it all from overseas and i was like literally my planner is incredible. So I still had, I feel like I had a lot of involvement in all of the decisions, the creative control. I had a firm idea in my mind of how I wanted everything to run. And I still feel like I had a lot of control over the day, but having a planner to prompt all of those decisions and the discussions and, oh, have you thought about this? And, oh, actually, and her advice, obviously she's done, she does these day in, day out. And there were so many things which we tweaked and changed along the way, which we were adamant that we didn't want to do. And she ended up being perfectly right. And we are so glad we listened to her. So we looked at four different planners, got quotes from them based on recommendations on the Santorini Brides Facebook page. So we looked at Tie the Knot, Julia and Evita, Red Knot Weddings and Charlotte May Weddings. Julia and Evita and Tie the Knot were their work is absolutely stunning like definitely follow them on instagram just for wedding inspo they are incredible however when we inquired with them their fees were higher than what we had budgeted and from talking to them it seemed like they catered to a lot more expensive weddings a lot more elaborate and i think they are very creative minded and they like to drive the creative direction that's kind of the like idea that I got from them is that I would, I think I would struggle to work with them because they would be taking the lead on the creative side. Whereas, so I'm an interior designer by trade. So I like to make sure that everything is exactly how I want it. But also they, when I was talking to them about the budget that I had in mind, they were kind of like, no, you can't do it for that. <laughs> I was like, I know that people do do it for a lot cheaper, but I think they mean the people who they work with them to achieve their kind of signature look, the prices are way up there. On the other end of the spectrum, so Red Knot we got a quote from, theirs was the lowest price, but I was looking at their portfolio of previous weddings and it did look a little less kind of detailed and not quite as elaborate as I would be wanting. Whereas Charlotte May Weddings, which spoiler is who I went with, when I looked at her portfolio, it was weddings that were of the same kind of caliber as what I had in mind and still absolutely beautiful, but not like not up here and not there. It was like perfect middle ground. She came so well reviewed and honestly, I could from the bottom of my heart, like couldn't thank her enough throughout the planning process and on the actual day, she was an absolute saint. So a bit about our wedding day. So we, Got married on the 6th of August 2023 at El Viento, which is in Megalahori, kind of in the middle of Santorini. Um, still on the coast, it has a caldera view. Um, it is the most beautiful, so it has a windmill and then this like half windmill ruin on the top terrace. And then you go down some stairs, it's all built on like the side of a cliff. And then there is a long terrace and a cave uh, that goes kind of underneath where the windmill is and a bar and the whole venue has this absolutely stunning caldera view where the sun sets over the sea and it is just like something out of a fairy tale. We had 41 guests, so there was 43 of us in total if you're counting me and Jake. And actually El Viento was the perfect size for that many guests. We were a little bit worried that it was gonna feel a bit too squishy. I think El Viento says that it's perfect for around 30 guests. So we were thinking we were pushing it a little bit but it felt perfect. It really wasn't like everyone was kind of 
squished in at all it felt like we kind of filled out the venue so yeah it was quite a sweet spot of the number of people and it was just magical we could get around and we spoke to absolutely everyone felt like we had really good quality time with everyone on the day so once we had chosen the wedding planner we then started straight away choosing venues and the planner Charlotte, she helped us to understand which were the priority items that we had to book in kind of a year in advance. So we started the process, I think it was about May 2022 and the wedding was August 23. So we started just about a year in advance. In Santorini, the suppliers very much go through peaks and troughs of when they are, you know, dedicated to wedding planning. So in the peak season, which runs from about May to September-ish, that's when all of the weddings are happening. So obviously the suppliers are on their active weddings, you know, um, actually doing their job. However, in the off season, most people, I can't remember what the, I think it's something like 75%, don't quote me on that, of people who are in Santorini in the peak season actually are based elsewhere they don't live on Santorini um, itself so loads of those wedding suppliers leave the island in the off season and go to Athens and do their day job there or wherever it is so then they're also not dedicated to quoting and helping you plan your wedding so it we did find it quite frustrating that was probably the thing that I found the hardest was not having people kind of dedicated to responding to my emails daily. My wedding planner was, or she's based in the UK in off season and then lives in Santorini in the peak season or in the wedding season. So she was really, really good. And this is her full-time job. So she was really good at getting back to us, but suppliers were quite slow. And the key priority suppliers that she said to get booked were, so venue, photographer and videographer if we were going for it, entertainment and surprisingly hair and makeup. So with the venues, she sent us all of the brochures for all of the venues and kind of talked us through, got an idea from us of what we wanted. We wanted somewhere with character. So we didn't want it to be just like a hotel function room that was too clean and pristine. We wanted, definitely wanted some character. Um, and we quite quickly narrowed it down to El Viento, Bennett Sanos Winery and Cabo Ventus. But just looking at the spaces and looking at the sizes of them and the aesthetics and things, I we I fell in love with El Viento like immediately because of the windmill. I just thought it was the most beautiful, like there is nothing more charming and romantic than a windmill. And the views were absolutely gorgeous. And I just fell in love with it. The other venues were really nice, but we just felt like they were a little bit more kind of disjointed. So Cabo Ventus um, from memory had a few different areas and we didn't want, with it being not that many people, we kind of wanted to be able to have everyone in one, in, in the same area at any given point so that it didn't feel like you had two people over there and five people over there, etc., etc. And yeah, so narrowed it down to El Viento pretty quickly and got a, Gave them a few dates we were looking at, got it booked in. Photographers and videographers, we pretty much as soon as I'd decided on Santorini, I'd found Photos Art and fell in love with their work. And it was a really hard, like there would have been no chance basically of persuading me to go with anybody else. They, their work is outstanding. The quality of photos that they put out are just so romantic and they capture the essence of the day so perfectly they're so soft they're so candid and natural and they really capture the kind of love between people and they're just stunning so i knew straight away that i wanted to go with them we got quotes from other people photos aren't were the most expensive but i knew that that was going to be obviously i make videos i do a lot on instagram i love photos and videos and it's something that I'm really I really value so I knew that that was going to be a massive part of you know that's the thing that you take away from the day is the photos and videos and the way that they capture the day is for me my memory is shocking when people take photos and videos that kind of supersedes the genuine memory in my head because the genuine memory fades away very quickly my memory is so bad Whereas if I've got photos and videos to refer to, yeah, I can remember it forever. So yeah, we knew that we wanted to prioritize that in our budget. 
and having the video again was really important so we went for uh, the photo and video package with them for entertainment we were given the option of you know a band or a saxophonist or a harp player or pianist or whatever it was or just having a dj and we played with all the different ideas had a look at costs we loved the idea of having a band there we had a look into doing that sort of thing however there was none based in santorini so we would have had to pay for flights and accommodation everything to bring someone over onto the island which was prohibitively expensive for us so we decided not to go down that route and then having like a harp or a or a saxophonist or something we thought about and we thought it would be a nice to have rather than an essential um, and we would rather have prioritised budget elsewhere bearing in mind we felt we needed to have a DJ in the evening regardless so we booked in the DJ and thought right let's put a pin in the idea of a saxophonist or something and then finally there was the hair and makeup so we got some quotes from a few different places it was about a thousand euros just for bridal hair and makeup which for me was again prohibitively expensive bearing in mind that I wanted to pay for bride, uh, bridesmaids and my mum to have it done as well so that just wasn't really in the budget for us I would have rathered for me I felt I would have rathered to prioritise the cost for photographer and videographer rather than hair and makeup so I had a look at the different options, ended up booking Rena Hair Creations, my hair, and she did such a beautiful job. We had a hair trial a few days before, which I was so glad we did because there was a few little tweaks that I wanted to make. And on the day it ended up perfect because we'd had that chance for the hair trial. And then I had one of my friends who is amazing at makeup. She did my makeup and that was worked so amazingly like she did such a beautiful job and to have her as part of the kind of getting ready and we were able to practice a couple of times beforehand that worked perfectly and yeah so going with that kind of those two options saved a lot of money and I was so happy on the day so they were the suppliers which we booked kind of before the off season and then it went a bit quiet so from there it was a case of pulling together all of the Pinterest boards and a bit of a firmer idea of what we wanted, how we wanted the wedding to run. You know, we that was when I was firmly into TikTok, what were they going to recommend for me, all of those things. All of the Pinterest boards for the aesthetic direction, you know, I was trying to sort out bridesmaids dresses, groomsmen suits, other jobs for other people to have during the day and just kind of building up the idea. I feel like it wasn't much, there wasn't much doing and booking, but there was a lot of like building up the ideas and kind of going through the motions of the kind of, I don't know, creative direction of the day, I suppose. And one of the big things at this point, so the decoration for the day and how the day actually looked, that was probably took the longest and definitely I would say allocate as much time as you can to that process. and my biggest tip is to try to get absolutely everything sorted kind of three months in advance because things do take so long and getting responses from all of the suppliers does take such a long time and my florist and kind of wedding stylist i suppose they were absolutely incredible on the day but their communication prior was shocking <laughs> it was really slow and one of the difficulties that we had with it being overseas and the language barrier was just that they i don't think they quite understood what i was looking for initially so i prepared a full pdf document of all of the flowers that i wanted like the flowers the candles that i wanted table decoration everything like that sent it to them and then what i got back wasn't quite what i'd spect so we went back and forth quite a few times, but between each email, it would take them sort of three weeks to respond. So we got there in the end and I was over the moon with what we ended up with. We did really, really well. We definitely maximized what we got. Um, and my planner was really helpful for that as well, like helping us understand where we could reuse things. Um, so to talk you through, I will put up um, some of the, Okay, so this is a little snippet, I won't talk you through everything, but of the mood boards which I sent to the florist. So I knew that I wanted a big arch, um, and I knew that the palette overall that I wanted was going to be quite neutral, mostly white, but bits of 
uh, dashes of kind of nude and terracotta and kind of natural tones, which I thought would really blend in so nicely with the overall venue and the landscape that you could see. I really wanted the venue to sing and be the focal point, but so I wanted this big arch. I've got multi-use aisle and table ends, so we actually ended up tweaking that. And so at the bottom of the arch, we had trailing bits either side, um, which were movable. We had those taken down to the end of the dining table and it worked perfectly. We also had a welcome sign that had a small flower arrangement that was also reusable. So on the flip side of that, was the seating plan. So on the dining table, we had one long dining table and people sat either side of it. And we had table decorations of vases of flowers all the way down at little bud vases, candlesticks. And then we had a few extra vases. So we had three smallish vases dotted along the table for the bridesmaids to drop their flowers into. And then we had a bigger one in the center of the table for me to drop my bouquet into. So again, we were reusing so that we weren't paying, you know, doubling up on cost. So a quick rundown of the timeline. And again, I will pop, pop this in here of exactly what happened when. So our ceremony started at 4 p.m. with me kind of entering at 4.30. We initially, and this was one of the things where we went back and forth with the wedding planner, we were really trying to push for a 3 p.m. start. We were just so worried about the day feeling super condensed and short and, and just going too quickly. We felt like if we started at four or five, it would feel like just an evening do. So we were really pushing, but this was, we had our wedding obviously start of August in Santorini, middle of summer, it was hot, but we'd also just had a heat wave like the week or two before. Thankfully on the day it wasn't too hot but we started to realise quite quickly actually it's very very hot and El Viento doesn't have any shade and it doesn't have any indoor rooms, no aircon, nothing and we had three pregnant people due to go to the wedding, we had Jake's granny who's 85 so we had quite a few vulnerable people who we really didn't want to be sat in the heat all day with no shade and ultimately getting sunstroke or getting really poorly collapsing whatever we decided that actually we were better having a shorter wedding day that was going to be you know better quality um everyone was enjoying it more rather than by the evening just feeling exhausted and unwell so we had so many starting at four o'clock worked really well obviously the preparation worked back from there so we had i think the bridal party arrived at mine at nine-ish. Hair started at ten-ish. We had the photographers coming to do Jake's getting ready shots at like 12.30 I think, 12.31 o'clock-ish. They came to my room at two and then we had the ceremony. There's something that made the ceremony so special. So we had one of my best friends like from childhood. She was our celebrant. Our ceremony was just a symbolic ceremony so uh, and then we did the legal bit afterwards when we were back in Australia. So we had our friend do the ceremony for us, which was so special. And then we had Jake's sister and my sister do some readings on the day, which were so emotional. And Jake and I wrote our own vows for each other and recited those. So everything about that ceremony was just perfection. It was absolutely gorgeous. And so it felt very casual, actually. It was just lovely that like, there was laughter. It felt like a very like, and I thought we would feel really nervous and stiff and strict, but actually it just felt like us with all of the people that we love, like showing everyone that we love each other, but it was so full of happiness and laughter and it was so candid and like my sister didn't have, I think this was my mess up. Also my sister's reading booklet didn't have her reading in, it was just the pretty booklet. So she had to like run off, find her phone, read it out from her phone and things. Even that, like it was just funny and I didn't mind at all. So yeah, it was great. So we had the ceremony. Something that I do want to mention, our planner made sure that we had 10 minutes after. So we had the ceremony, walked down the, back down the aisle as husband and wife, and then they made sure that we had 10 minutes with a glass of fizz. We went back to the windmill, because the windmill is actually a hotel room. You stay upstairs and then downstairs, it's like a little kitchen living room area. It's adorable. And we just had 10 minutes to just be like, 
<sighs> oh my God, we've done it. That was amazing. What did you think? Oh my God. After the ceremony, we had the kind of everyone milling around, congratulating us. We had an ice cream cart at that point. The bar opened. We had a open bar all day. We, there was a few things that we really knew that we wanted to do to kind of thank people for coming all the way to Santorini. Uh, make sure that everything on the day was free and you know amazing quality so we had yeah this um ice cream cart which was amazing we had the open bar and then we had group photos and then jake and i went off to have our portrait shoot we went into megalohori which is like this old beautiful town for the portrait shoot and spent i think it was about an hour that we had for that shoot just wandering around the streets having the most gorgeous photos they are absolutely stunning i love this one that i'm going to put in here of um there was a little cat yeah just these such cute photos and then we came back and then did our reception entrance so everyone had moved down onto the lower terrace they'd all had like cocktail hour canapes everything like that so then we did our reception entrance we did that to shake your tail feather um which was so much fun like way more fun than I was anticipating it to be. I, th I thought it was going to feel a bit cringe, but actually it was just the most joyful thing. Like everyone like cheering and wearing, we were coming down the stairs and dancing, like being really silly. And yeah, it was just so fun. And then we did a Prosecco tower. So yeah, and then everyone took their seats for dinner. So we had dinner in the cave, this long table in the cave, and it was stunning. We, we did the speeches to begin with. With Santorini weddings, you wanna make sure that you are able to have photos at sunset and that everyone can kind of have a few moments to watch the sunset and enjoy it and take photos and things without having, so you wouldn't have the speeches at sunset because then people are probably, whilst the speech is going on, turning around taking photos of the sunset. So they keep this kind of window around the sunset and our speeches were just before sunset and they did end up pushing into sunset a little bit. And I could see the photographers were like, so like itching to get us away and they wanted to take us just down the road from El Viento, like literally a five minute walk away. There is a cliff where you can get some beautiful photos at sunset. Um, but we made the decision that we would have rather have the time spent during the speeches and it be uninterrupted speeches that didn't feel rushed and then have a shorter period for sunset photos than you know cut the speeches short because for me the speeches were a massive part of the day and they're one of the things which i um, absolutely love doing so we had my dad started off with a really cute speech it was lovely then we had the best man do a speech with a little bit from one of the groomsmen and then I did a speech and then Jake did a speech and I just loved it. So yeah, and then we popped off, had a few quick uh, sunset photos still in El Viento, which are beautiful photos, I love them. And then we had dinner. So we had the family style buffet, which meant that all of the plates were kind of served in the middle of the table, which worked really well. And it's quite a traditional way of how the Scully family, so Jake's family and mine to be fair, and how we, whenever we have dinners here, we never really do like plated meals. Everything's in the middle of the table. You grab what you want. It's a lot more sociable. And yeah, it was perfect. The food was absolutely incredible. So yeah, then we did our first dance and the cake cutting. The cake cutting was another fail, but I, I never cared about the cake cutting to begin with. We just did it. So Jake, loves cake, I'm not that fussed. And then there was the party commenced. Um, and then that was that for kind of, we had three hours of dancing. Everyone was on the dance floor the whole night, which was just amazing. I feel like there's a few things which didn't go well, which I will touch on. Um, but even though they didn't go well, they turned out perfectly in the end anyway. One of the main ones was on the wedding day itself. It was so windy. I got a text from my wedding planner about two hours before the wedding saying, right, we've, we've arrived, we've tried to set it up in your preferred way. We were supposed to have the long table down the length of the terrace with chandeliers on convex stands going over it. So we were supposed to have five of those and then obviously all of the floral decorations, napkins, a big table runner, all of that. However, it was too windy. They tried to set it up and not even like the cutlery was staying on the table. It was just all flapping everywhere. 
the wind was like picking up dust and sand and bringing it onto the table and it was just a nightmare so with yeah two hours to go she was like what do you want to do do you want to relocate it and I was like just do whatever you need to do like it's too late I'm getting stressed like the photographers were all there the girls were all like getting ready together it was chaos so I was like just do whatever you want just make sure it looks beautiful I trust you um, and this is where how would you do this if you were coordinated the day yourself like I would have been so stressful I would have been on the phone to the suppliers in broken English trying to explain how to relocate it but they did an amazing job so they moved the table into the into the cave so the cave was supposed to be kind of where the dance floor was we'd got some disco balls which were going to be so it was disco balls and clouds of gypsophila that were supposed to be in the cave and then that was going to be the dance floor area instead we moved the table into the cave and then we had chandeliers where the disco balls were supposed to be still had the gypsophila clouds which worked so beautifully uh, and then again because of the wind so we planned to have some surprise fireworks going off at 10 o'clock but because of the wind it was too windy for them to be able to do the fireworks and then the planner came to what do you want to do do you want to do floor fireworks so the fountain fireworks that go on the floor but we had them in a circle around where our first dance was and it made it, oh, I've just got goosebumps thinking about it. It was so magical. So we, I wasn't sure about doing that. Like we hadn't thought about it before, but it worked so perfectly because, so our first dance, we practiced it and practiced it, but basically we just, we hadn't managed to get it as like a nice natural choreographed routine. Like it just, it ended up just being us swaying because if we tried to do much more than that, we were bigger. And we had like a lift, a like dip, a couple of spins, things like that, but it really was very, very basic. However, because of the fireworks, it just made it magical. Like if we'd have just been doing that and like, I think it would have been still nice, but a little bit cringe. But with the fireworks, it was just perfection. And everyone was saying afterwards that it like, was so special they obviously had no idea that it was coming and yeah it was just incredible so again another thing which went wrong but actually ended up better than what we could have planned so yeah that was the wedding i just wanted to mention as well very quickly the other things which we had planned whilst we were in santorini so we had family come for a week um because we were coming from australia and with jet lag and just wanting to make kind of a bigger holiday of it we had two weeks there. So we arrived two days before everybody else just so that we could get over jet lag before they arrived. So we had two days in Ia to begin with to relax. We had a beautiful hotel. I will be uploading a vlog of the wedding week and the honeymoon week on my channel very, very soon. So please keep an eye out for that. They are the most wholesome videos. It made me so happy. So yeah, we stayed in the most amazing hotel and then we went over to Parissa for the week whilst everyone was with us. So everyone pretty much stayed in Parissa, which is the kind of beachy side of the island. It's where a lot more larger and more affordable resorts are. We found a beautiful hotel there that all of the family and a few of our friends stayed in, which was uh, the Tui Blue Meltemi in Parissa cannot recommend enough they were absolutely incredible such a beautiful hotel so yeah we had the week with everyone there and we had a few pre-wedding events so on the wednesday we had a welcome white party for everyone so we booked out a like beach bar and hosted drinks for everyone everyone came in white it was such a vibe it looked so cool everyone looked absolutely amazing and that was the opportunity to see everyone and catch up and it took having these little events took the pressure so much off the wedding day and then on the thursday we had the hen and stag do which was so lovely and then the monday so the wedding was on the sunday and then the monday afterwards we had like a farewell gathering at carissa beach so we just invited everyone to the beach everyone was a bit hungover we had a big debrief and that was the time to kind of say goodbye to everyone it was really nice to have a catch up on you know their favorite bits from the night before and exchange your stories and all of that and just celebrating with everyone but also that was our time to say goodbye to everyone say thank you for coming all of those things which again took the pressure off the wedding so at the end of the night it was see you tomorrow not see you in a year's time or whatever so yeah it was 
so lovely and I think we the way that we planned it actually worked out so well thank you so much for watching I'm gonna leave it here but please do let me know if there's any other details that you want to know please jump into the comments into my DMs whatever it is I would be more than happy to help clearly this is a topic that I'm very passionate about <laughs> <laughs> thank you so so much congratulations and good luck if you are planning a wedding yeah please do watch my vlogs um and share the joy of them because i they make me so happy and i will see you in my next one thank you so much goodbye